I've recently joined Learning Loop as a mentor, and last week I had the privilege of attending my first uh, Learning Loop mentor session, which is a session where all the mentors get together and we share our experiences and talk about some of the challenges we face in our day to day work. And during that session, I shared some ideas on how you can implement product strategy with culture, and Anders thought it would be useful for me to share it with a wider audience, and that's why I'm making this recording. So, some context of what we're discussing in the mentors uh, session is that we were, I'm sure you've come across a situation where you've got product strategy on one end, which you've written out and you've articulated to your organization. And then you look down the line a few months later and you have a look and you say what the implementation of that strategy is nothing that, that looks nothing like the original strategy that I wrote down and I spoke about the rest of the company. And we were discussing how do you bridge that gap to make sure that the things we write down on paper strategically are the things that end up getting implemented. And um, I shared um, a quote which a friend of mine recently reminded me of. And the quote is from Peter Tracher that says, um, culture eats strategy for breakfast. And my understanding of that quote is not that cult strategy is not, is not that strategy is not important. It's that even the best strategies in the world um, are bound to fail if they're not matched with the right culture. So um, let me share two ideas with you on how we can um, you know, use culture to implement strategy. The first that I've found in my experience is structure people's time and their calendar because the way people spend their time and the things that are in their calendar and their routines drives their imagination and drives their practice. So an example at JMHR where I'm working, we build HR systems for deskless workers. So those are workers who typically are on their feet. Um, they don't work behind a desk. Um, however, we at, as JEM employees, we find ourselves being very much this. We work behind laptops and we always are in the office. So what happens is then our imagination is shaped by our experiences, not by the experiences of our customers, which is very different. So what we've done to address that um, is we've got a strategic pillar of customer understanding and empathy. And how we implement that is that we've got a few um, customer activations that happen every few weeks and we're rotating the entire company to go on site and actually do a customer activation. That's where we show our customers how to use our chatbot and how to use our service. And what we're finding is that as we rotate everyone from operations, finance, HR, product, engineering, is that people's imaginations are being shaped now um, with our customers' reality. And it's just becoming part and parcel of what they do now. So whenever we're making decisions, you know, the customer, the imagination of a customer's reality is very much at the forefront of everyone's mind. So that's a cool way, you know, structure people's calendars and um, that will then drive those behaviors that probably will allow you to better implement your strategy. The second thing I want to share with you is lean into your company value. So at a business I was uh, working at before I joined GMHR, we had four company values and we always made sure that our company values were aligned to our company strategy. And what we would do then is we would have a rewards program where um, employees could nominate each other's colleague, uh, their colleagues for who embodied that value the best. And there would be a monthly winner um, who would get nominated, who got the most votes um, in the month. There would be a quarterly winner who got the most votes in a quarter. And there would be a yearly winner who got the most votes in a year. And what we would do then is reward the, the monthly, quarterly, and and yearly winners with varying prizes and even the annual winner would get a big prize like they could take any developmental experience like going to any conference they wanted in anywhere in the world so it would be a big prize and what we found is that colleagues started spending more time thinking about the values they started spending more time trying to embody and live up to the values and they spend more time um, talking to each other about the values rather than top management talking down to the employees about the those values and the whole point of this is to show that if you can match your values to your strategy and then incentivize people to uh, to embody those values, then what you'll find is a system where um, your product strategy starts to get lived out organically and not something that's being forced from top down. So those are just two ideas which I've just shared with you on how to bring culture, how to use culture, sorry, to um, implement your strategy. The first is structure people's time because how people spend their time is typically how is, is going to influence their imagination and the behaviors that they have. And then also, you know, work on trying to align your values straight back into product strategy and incentivize people on those values so that they start to embody them and live them out organically. There's a few more ideas that I do have and I'd you know, love to share them with you in a mentoring session, but I hope that um, these two have been helpful for you and uh, it would be cool to hear from you on the Learning Loop channel. Thanks so much for your time.